Hello and welcome to a VRTK live stream with me, the Stone Fox. Jasmine unfortunately cannot be with us tonight. She's made prior arrangements and that's a shame because tonight is going to be the last live stream in a while. Uh, just give a quick um, background into why that is. So we were putting the live streams together. Uh, initially it was because I was teaching Jasmine how to use VRTK and we figured that we'd just do it live and show people. Um, but from feedback we've had, not a lot of people are really um, been able to spend the time watching these live streams to the length that they are. Uh, they're running over an hour and some are running into multiple streams. Um, so what we're going to look to do in the future is cut back on the live stream. So we probably won't do any of those for a while. And we're going to focus more on shorter, better produced YouTube tutorials. So five, ten minute tutorials just showing how to do key individual things rather than live streams and then if those videos take off we may come back with live streams in the future so anybody watching now uh, thank you very much for all your effort in watching the previous live streams um, and hopefully we'll bring you more content in the future anyway let's move on and go over what we're going to do in tonight's stream so now, tonight's stream we're going to do a take on the VRTK bowling tutorial. So if anybody has uh, tried to look up VRTK tutorials in the past, you'll probably be aware of the bowling tutorial, which there's a written guide, and I'll show that in a minute. Um, and we're going to do a little bit of take on that. We're going to take that and we're going to see if we can just add a few things to it, just finish off on something a bit fun and a bit easy. Um, but before we get into that, let's just go over the housekeeping stuff. So vrtk.io is the website which has got all of the resources that you need to learn about vrtk and again there's the patreon at patreon.com slash vrtk vrtk is free and open source and we make no money from anything other than the patreon so if you do want to help support vrtk please consider becoming a patron and i need to give a shout out to tuka Takala, who is at the level to get shout outs in youtube videos and then finally as i was saying this is the tutorial that we're roughly going to be following so this uh, tutorial has existed for some time it makes a simple bowling game we're going to try and uh, add a little bit more to it if we can and make it a little bit more fun i'll put a link in the description for this down below okay so let's get on with it um right so we can see i've already gone through the tutorial a little bit i've added some nice funky uh, carpet textures a line texture um actually this model is something that i've built in blender so we've actually got uh in the tutorial we just got bumpers but in here we can see we've kind of got like little gutters so and um, this is a simple model and as usual i'll upload this project um somewhere and i'll put a link in the description down below so you can use it um and i've added in this backboard these side bits uh i've taken one of these gutters as well and we use it as kind of like a, a ball holder over here we've added in a simple ball and then we've got a bunch of pins down here as well and all these models will come with uh the example project right so what i've done also is i've gone and got the um Tilia package importer from um, the Unity Asset Store. And then I've imported a bunch of packages already, the standard packages. So what we're going to do to start with is we're just going to add some stuff that we, we've tend to be uh, adding in the past um, in previous tutorials. So we're just going to add our tracked alias, our camera rig, our interactors, and we'll put in a teleport so we just get around this scene. So let's do that really, really quickly. I'm just going to minimize all this. Um, and we can keep this neat as well. We'll put this in a VRTK stuff thing here and let's just make sure that's reset to zero so first thing we're going to do is Tilia prefab and we're going to get a camera rig and we're going to get the unity xr plugin camera rig and then we're going to go get our tracked alias so camera rigs tracked alias and then we're going to set our tracked alias up to listen to our unity xr camera rig so that's all set up done and dusted there next thing we do need to do is go and get the um unity input system uh, sample mappings so let's go to the package manager and then the packages in my project over here and these are all the things that i've downloaded already um, from the tilia importer uh, so we want the unity input system samples import those generic samples and then we can just bring that in as well so that's in this folder we just need those mappings in 
So that's given us some button mappings. Next thing we need to do is set up our uh, interactors. So we'll do one on the left controller. Uh, so Tilia, Prefabs, Interactions, Interactors, Interactor. And we'll rename this to Left Interactor just so it's easier to see where it's coming from. Set up the Velocity Tracker to be the left controller alias. And then our grab action, we're going to use the left grab button. So input actions, left controller and left grip that's what we're using the left grip press so we're going to put that there and then we'll just copy this paste it into the right controller rename it to right interactor and then we need to change that velocity tracker to the right controller alias velocity tracker and the grab action we're going to use right grip so over here right grip right grip press and there we go so we've set up our interactors let's now set up um just the, the ability to teleport around so let's add in a teleporter so tilia prefabs locomotors teleporter and we're going to add in the instant teleporter and we need to just configure this as usual so on the track alias we know we've got um the target is the play area the offset is our headset and our camera validity is our scene cameras and we will need to come back and set a rule up a little bit later to stop us from being able to teleport everywhere. We'll just set it so there's only like a, a specific area that we can teleport to. Um, and we're just going to use the teleport area. We're not going to bother. Uh, we're going to use the teleport. We're not going to bother with teleport areas or teleport points. Just keep it super simple. And then in here, we're going to add a curved pointer. So if we go to Tilia, Prefabs, Indicators, Object Pointers, Curved Pointer. And then we need to set this up as well. So we want this to follow around our, let's have it follow around our left controller. So we're going to teleport with our left controller. So follow source is left controller. We're going to activate with touchpad touch as usual. Um, so touchpad there. So on our pointer, we're going to use touchpad touch to activate. And we're going to use touchpad press to select. And we'll minimize that, minimize that. And then when we make a selection, we just want to tell our teleporter to teleport us. So put the teleporter in there, go to the teleporter facade and go to the dynamic event teleport. So we've got our teleport set up now. We can actually get rid of this main camera if we don't need it. Um, so we've got that set up. So we should be able to teleport around now. We need to turn this ball into an interactable object. So we're going to select the ball and then we're going to go up to our menu, interactions, interactable creator, convert to interactable. We've now got our interactable ball. I'm just going to stick that down the bottom. Um, I'm just going to take out that interaction. So it starts, it just says interactable ball. We're going to set its primary action to follow. We'll have it follow transform. That's fine. We'll have it precision grab as well. So we can pick the ball up wherever we want. And then we'll have the second reaction as swap. So if we put it into the other hand and grab it, it's just going to swap into our other hand. Everything else we should be allowed to stay the same. Um, one thing just quickly with this entire map, if we just go to the environment, you can see on the line, if I select line, it's actually got a rotation of just one degree around the x-axis and that's just to make everything just slightly slanted so that means if we drop the ball it won't just stay still it will slowly roll and that's just to make this game a little bit easier um so if you notice when i drop things and roll it that's why and if we look at this table it's actually countering that uh one percent rotation by minus one so it won't roll in there um right so we've got pretty much everything set up there. The next thing we want to do is set up our pins. So we've got all these pins down here. Actually, I only want one pin. So I'm going to get rid of all these. And we're going to set up this one pin. Um, and I'm going to go 0, 0, 0. And I think I want that one 0. And then I'm going to move these pins up. And we'll use these to sort everything out. So let's get these pins into the right position. So is it maybe 1.295? Let's just... Get it the right height you can see it's clipping a bit there 1.3 1.35 is probably 2 1 1 2 5 that's about right so we're going to have this one pin here and we're going to turn this into a prefab so i'm going to create a folder and we're going to call it prefabs 
And the reason I'm going to use a prefab here is I'm going to duplicate this pin multiple times in a minute. So if I make any changes, I want them to uh, actually this is kind of a prefab already because it's um, it's an FBX, but we don't want to use that one. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to unpack this completely and then I'm going to make a new prefab from it. It's because that's an FBX file, so they come in as kind of like a prefab. So now we've got this prefab here, I can go in and start editing stuff on this prefab. So if we go in here, we need to add a collider to it. Um, so I'm just going to follow along with the guide as well uh, to do this stuff. So the guide tells us to put a capsule collider on this. So capsule collider and we need to set the center to mine, uh, an X of 0 0.21 a y of zero and a z of zero and then we need to set a radius to my alexa won't shut up let me unplug my alexa before it keeps talking there we go right um so we set the radius to 0 0.08 and we set the height to 0 0.5 five seven five and then finally the direction if we change to the x-axis we can see we've got a very simple collider that's going around this object in fact that's probably a little too big um so what i'm going to do is uh let's drop this down a bit five five two five and then we're going to move it up just a little bit to two no down a little bit one nine oops because what i don't want is this collider touching the floor at the bottom and i'll show you why in a minute we actually need to move this whole thing up as well what i want is because this is um a capsule collider it won't balance very easily or wobble around so we actually want um a box collider at the bottom so it stands up nice and straight um so i'm going to add another collider here i'm just going to add a box collider and then this box collider we're going to set its center to be 0 0.465 and the Y0 and the Z0 and then we're going to make the size really small just so it's got something to balance on so 0 0.1 0 0.03 0 0.03 um, and that's actually we need that to line up with the bottom of there so we need this whole thing to move up uh, one no that's way too much 0 0.1 0 0.5 0 0.4 0 0.5 2 1 just want to get it pretty much lined up with the bottom so that's that's about where it looks so it's, it's going to balance on there but it's going to be thin enough that if we hit this pin it can still fall over and then use the collider of the capsule collider i'm just going to reduce that radius a little bit seven five yeah that'll be about right and then i'm going to move this up as well so it sits in so we've sorted out the colliders on the pin now um so if i come back out of here and we're going to move all the pins up there about there three four and then it should be sitting on that um box collider so that's what it will balance on and then when we hit it it'll obviously then fall off that one and roll around on the the capsule collider which is more appropriate for what we want I mean, we could use mesh colliders and things, but it's easier to do it like this. So we've got our first bowling pin. So now we need to just set up all the other pins and we can just duplicate this. So if I duplicate that and we move this forward 0 0.3 and then we need to move it out a little bit. So 0.15 out. And then again, we're going to move it backwards. And we're going to copy this and we're going to move it to 0 0.6. And then we need three of these now. So we need one in the middle. And we need one at 0 0.45. No, is that too far? That's too far, isn't it? So uh, 0 0.3. Yeah, that's about right. Um, and then one at minus three. And then we're going to move another one back to 0 0.9. And that can be 4, 5. And then we can have one at one five and then we need one at plus one five and the final pin will be at plus four five um and there we go we've got our pin set up and now we can just move these into the position where we want them to be so we're going to move them nearer the end of the line so we're going to put them about there so that's pretty much the start of the uh, initial tutorial when you go through the tutorial, so you just set that up so you can bowl down and knock 
some pinto are these floating they are aren't they um we need to actually move these down more i tell you why they're floating it's because everything's angled isn't it three one three oh two nine so where i set them up earlier they would have been in the right position two eight two seven two six two five five two five two that'll do about two five two will do so they're roughly in the right position now um so we've got a ball we should be able to teleport around um and we should be able to knock those over so let me stick the headset on and we'll see if this works one minute okay my headset is now on let's get into tell you what i need to do i always forget to do this but we need to actually enable uh vr in this so player settings and then we go to xr plugin management and we're just going to use oculus i'm going to turn oculus on we need that to install otherwise we're not going to get any vr stuff working right okay so that should be working now single path instance should be fine close that and we can close that and now if I run the scene, I'm kind of standing in the lane. Uh, and my teleport on my left controller is not working. So let's go and figure out why. Um, left touchpad touch should activate my point i'll tell you what we can do actually to move us out we can just grab our tracked alias and we can just move it back so we can just drag our tracked alias over to here um i don't know why the tracked alias is in the ground like that uh zero where's he gone now he's all the way over there for some reason and zero right there we go and now we're going to drag our tracked alias back over here and he needs to come up because he's for some reason he's stuck in the ground so i'm going to bring it up here you can know where the, the base of the track alias is if you've got interactors because they help, help kind of show up, uh, bring him back a little bit. So why wasn't that uh, this working? Activation action is left touchpad touch. And let's save that. So we're in the right position now. It's still not bringing up the teleporter um okay joys so why is that not working let's try uh left thumbstick touch just in case uh touchpad doesn't register because these are open xr mappings so it may not register on the oculus touchpad it might be some yeah we go there we go look it's something so we can teleport around we can actually teleport on all this stuff so we need to sort that out we can go over to our ball we can pick our ball up and then if i just move, move back a little bit we should be able to bowl our ball down and we've got the gutters and then it'll just roll down the gutter and it'll go to the end so we've missed everything there i could teleport all the way down if i wanted try and grab the ball and move all the way back up um but let's stop and start and what I'll do instead is I will try and actually knock them over. I'm actually teleporting onto the ball as well, so we need to fix all this. There we go. Is that a strike? Nope. So the ball has gone into them there and nothing has moved, so we need to fix that as well. So if we turn this off, let's fix a couple of things first um, that are a little bit annoying. So the first thing we want to do is make it so our pins easily fall over um and we can do that just by reducing the um if we just edit the prefab if we go to our uh oh actually no the the pins need a rigid body so we need to add a rigid body to them so add a rigid body and then we just need to have a small mass on there so 0.5 as the mass and then if we go back to our bowling ball we can just increase the mass on that one as well. So if we put that up to two, let's say. Right, let's just double check that we're actually knocking the pins over. Oh, all the pins have knocked themselves over. 
Okay. So we've got a problem with our pins. So let's go and have a look at them. So what's happening is when we start the game, all the pins are just automatically falling over. Um, and I bet that's because... Yeah, that they're, they're rolling on the, um, the collider. So that collider there is clipping with something. So let's just move it up a little bit more. So for... Not that one. Um, it's the capsule collider we want to move up. Oh, move up is down. 185 maybe? We just basically want them to balance on that bottom, bottom cube. Nope. That one's still falling over. I don't know why. Um, let's go back in here. Let's give this a mass of one again. See how we get on with a mass of one. Nope, it's falling back. Uh, I'll tell you what we could try is increasing the um, kind of like the the area that this bottom pin gives us because they shouldn't be colliding with anything unless the no, the box collider won't collide with the capsule collider. Um, so what we can try and do is give this a bit of a bigger footprint. So 0 0.05, that's a bit bigger now. Um, and that will change on all of them as well. So if I run that. There we go. They're kind of standing up now, we can see. So if I get the ball and try and knock them all down. I've, got, I've gutted it, haven't I? No. Um, right, let's stop and start. We need to actually turn this into a game where we can get the ball back and stuff. We'll do that in a bit. Have I gutted it again or am I going to hit some? There we go. So we need to actually increase the either the ball weight or reduce the, um, the mass of the pins because they're... A bit too heavy so i am going to drop that down to 0 0.5 and I just make sure they do stand up still yeah they do they're standing up just fine um right so next thing i'm going to do is i'm just going to make a little teleport area that is just the area that we can teleport to and then we're going to create a rule that only lets us teleport there and doesn't allow us to teleport on top of anything else or onto the ball or anything like that hello onikazi you're not beyond fashionably late um right so what we'll do here is I'm just going to create an empty cube and we're going to go 0, 0, 0. I'm going to bring it back up here like this. And we're just going to make this cube, let's say 2, 3 by 2, maybe. Um, so this is the area that you can teleport around to. We'll say. That gives you plenty of room to get over to there. We're going to turn our mesh collider off. And then we're going to create a tag for this. We're going to tag this and we're going to create a new tag called teleport area. And we're going to give this, we're going to call this teleport area as well. And then we're going to give it that tag, teleport area. And now we're going to create a rule for our teleporter. So if I go into the teleporter and go to senior observable list generator, let's snap some of these down here. And then we're going to create an any tag rule. So any tag rule, create one of them. And we'll call this uh, teleport rule. And what did you call the tag? We called it teleport area. So teleport area is our tag. So you can only teleport onto anything with the tag teleport area. So our teleporter is going to get that rule validity. And we're also going to give that to our uh cursor as well we're going to say the only targets that are valid are anything that's got the teleport rule on um target validity is teleport area so if we save and run we should now see we can't teleport anywhere else we can only teleport in this little area that we've defined with that with that uh, simple cube we can grab the ball and let's try and bowl this now i just want to be able to hit something there we go. They had a little bit more uh, ability to fall over then. So that was a bit better. They're falling in the gut and that was well brilliant. Um, okay. So 
we've got a real real simple game we can bowl it down the uh gutters i also do have in the environment somewhere uh bumpers as well so the original um tutorial has bumpers in it so if you want to play with bumpers you can uh, but just show this quickly actually go over here grab the ball if you throw it against them i've actually managed to chuck it on top of the bumper but if you throw it against the bumper it'll do that it'll just roll pretty much straight down the bumper like that go and get it from behind trick shot then no, it's going to stop um so we're going to add some coding to make it actually like simply bounce off the bumpers um so we'll do that in a bit as well but for now we're going to turn the bumpers off right so we've got our basic 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 game here um next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to make it easier to grab the ball so i'm going to add in the um uh, pointer interactor so i've added that into the scene already so i'm going to go into prefabs uh what is it indicator no it's interactions interactors distance grabber so we're going to have a left distance grabber and again we just need to set up the interactor we don't need to set up the follow source i don't think i think that automatically comes if you, if you don't specify that so we're going to say you you're going to be for the left interactor and then we're going to need one for the right interactor as well so i'm just going to copy and paste that and then on the right interactor we put the right interactor in there and now i think and actually let's put a little transition duration in to make it a little bit a little bit funkier right now we shouldn't have to teleport over to the ball we should just be able to do this so you can see how we've got things and if we do that the ball snaps to our hand and then we can roll it down that's a pretty good one that that might be a strike no not bad not bad so we've added that in made that a little bit easier um well, what can we do next um so that's that takes you pretty much to the end of the first tutorial if you've gone through that that's kind of like the game that you end up with it's it's not amazing uh, but it's okay um we'll come back to doing some bumper bouncing in a bit uh, what I want to do is have it, if it hits this back wall, we actually want to reset the ball back over to here. Um, but yeah, let's do that next. So uh, we need somewhere that the ball can have as a spawn point. And we've done this before, this uh, this spawn thing. So we're going to have uh, ball logic here. And then we know where the ball wants to spawn because it's at this position. So we're going to have... Uh, ball spawn point and let's just make sure all this is zero zero and i'm going to actually drag this out of here for now because i want it to be the same as these settings so i'm just going to copy these values just the world position i'm going to paste it into here paste world position and then i'm going to put it in back inside ball logic that should be fine so that's where we want our ball spawn point to be and um, so when we spawn uh that's where it's going to end up um so what do we want to do now uh we want a transform property applier so if i create uh yeah we'll do it on here so uh, actually i want that to be one 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 um and we want uh, a transform property applier and the things that we want to apply to is the spawn point whoops the spawn point is our source uh yep and our target is our ball and we don't need to worry about the offset and the only thing we want to apply transform to is the position we're just going to bring the ball back and set it back there um so when our ball hits the backstop what do we need to do uh when it hits the backstop we actually want to stop it from moving as well um because its rigid body will be effectively moving forward and if it spawns back here it's going to keep going so we're going to need to add a rigid body property mutator and we're going to actually mutate the rigid body on the ball so we're going to set that as its target we'll come back and we'll set these up in a minute um so what do we want to do now we want to add Let's just set up an empty event proxy emitter that can run some logic for us. So empty event proxy emitter. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is clear the velocity 
and the angular velocity on the ball. So these two things we can use the rigid body property mutator for this. So in here, rigid body property mutator, there should be a clear velocity, there is. And there should be a uh, rigid body property mutator. There should be a uh, clear angular velocity, which there is. So we want to clear the velocities on the ball using that property mutator. And then we want to basically uh, apply the property. So um, transform property applier, if we just call apply, that should then set that ball back. Whenever we call this empty rigid body, it should stop the ball in its tracks and put the ball back here. So that's what we, we're effectively trying to do. Um, so what we need to do now on the backstop is uh, this part here. We need to set up a rigid body on it so it can pick up collisions. But we want this to be kinematic so we don't knock this around. And then we're going to use uh, a collision tracker again. So let's just minimize some of this stuff so we can read it easier. So collision tracker. This is going to pick up any collisions that happen. Um, so when a collision happens with this, um, when the ball collides with it, we want to set the ball back to here. So collision started. Uh, ball. Oh, I've put it all in there. I don't really need ball logic. Although I could put that back in there. That's fine. I'll put that back in there. Um, so where did we get to here? On that, we're going to say we're going to run that empty event, which should reset our ball. So when something hits there, we're going to actually reset it. Um, but what's going to happen now is anything could potentially collide with this and when it collides with it it's going to set the ball back now that shouldn't be a well that probably would be a problem if one of our pins collides with it so if a pin collides it's going to set the ball back um, so what we probably want to do is only run this code if the collider is our ball so uh, let's go to interactable ball and we're going to tag this. We're going to call this, uh, we're going to create a new tag called ball and we're going to tag our ball with ball. And then in our ball logic, we're going to create another any tag rule and we we'll call this uh, ball collider, oops, collider rule. And if it's got the tag ball, then we care about it. And then in here, we can say, um, sorry, in here, this backstop, we can say we only want to collide with ball. So we put that in there, save, close. Right, let's run this and see if it does what we think it should do. So if we grab the ball, if I just get my controller, if I throw it down the, the line now and get it down the gutter, should be able to distance grab it from here as well. I probably could if I could get it. Uh, what should happen? It should touch the backstop and then it should come back and it hasn't come back. So something has gone horribly, horribly wrong. Let's stop that and just take that rule out. Um, because it might not need to go there. I mean, to be fair, we might not need this rule at all. Let's try this again. Lob it as fast as I can. There we go. So the ball's come back that time. So we didn't actually need the rule. The only reason we'd need the rule is if I hit one of those pins hard enough, it's actually probably going to hit the backstop before the ball does, if I can actually get this. Actually, the ball jumped over it there. So this is not a, a classic bowling technique. Um, but for now, that's working. So we can probably move on. We can come back and look at some other bits. Uh, in a bit we can see when the ball hits a backstop it gets returned for us so that's nice and neat um so we'll stop that there uh right what can we do now um we need something to remember our pin state with as well so we can reset our pins um so let's uh create i'm just looking down the tutorial at the same time we can create a script to do this so let's do a bit of scripting so we're going to create a new folder called scripts to hold our scripts and then we're going to create a, a pin script now what's this doing actually this script here is keeping track of our pins which is what we want to do so we're going to create a script called pin let's clear this create a script called pin so script pin we're going to open this in visual studio it wants to open okay 
Come on, Visual Studio, I believe. Any minute now, it's going to open on me. Here we go. Right, Visual Studio. So we don't need any of this stuff. We can get rid of all the, the boilerplate stuff. Um, and looking what I've got on the tutorial, which is already online, the link I shared earlier. Um, we can just, I'm just going to start copying these things in and then I'll explain them as we go. So we, we've got some uh, variables here. Uh, we've got some default information that we're going to save and then we're going to have an awake method um, that basically stores the default rotation of the pin um, and then we're going to have a bit of logic here that checks to see if the pin has toppled uh, this is missing so we'll come back to this in a minute uh, cancel uh, topple check will add first um, which just cancels some invoke methods and uh, we need a method that hides the pin when it gets knocked over so we've got that and then the final method we need is the check rotation method which is this one um, and let's have a look through this quickly basically what happens if the this is basically checking to see if the pin has fallen over if the pin has fallen over it checks a number of times and then um, we hide the pin Basically, that's what's happening. We just turn the pin off uh, if it's been hidden, uh, if it's been hit, so the pins don't stay there. Um, this is actually all explained much better in the tutorial. So if you do go and look at this tutorial, um, go into documentation and go to expand in the bowling game. This is all in here. This explains all this. So if you want to read through this at your own leisure in the future, then feel free. Um, right. So with that on, we need to add this to our pin. So again, because we've got this as, um, what? Oh, hang on a minute. I'm missing something. I'm missing uh, to use Zinnia extensions at the top of here. So we need to use Zinnia, nope, I've pasted everything back in again. Uh, we need to use Zinnia extensions. There we go. So because we've got this pin set up, we can just go into it and we can put the pin on there that should be fine so basically what should happen now so if we hit those pins they should disappear when they get hit so let's just try that quickly i'll roll that down nope none of them have disappeared except the ball okay um they've all got pin script on now yeah and they've all got the topple threshold topple life three uh there's nothing in there that pin script should be fine um oh i'll tell you why because we need to actually set this up we need something to call this so let's go and have a look at what happens in the the uh the guide how we call this so we need a, a collision tracker on the pin so uh we get a collision tracker and we say um when a collision has started with it we want to use pin and we want to call its check topple event so uh pin we want to call check topple um i don't think we need to cancel the topple for now uh, right so that should work so now when the pin gets collided with it should check to see if it should get rid of itself so let's try this again have i missed if i've missed it doesn't matter the ball will come back to me there we go i've missed twice got a ball got a ball naturally what comes next is a strike probably not this time but i just need to check that these pins disappear they should fall over and there we go they're starting to disappear so once we've knocked them over they disappear and then we've only got two pins so we're just making a super super simple game um right so we've got our pins disappearing um what can we do next we can add in which i haven't added into the game yet 
into the uh, package manager, we can add in the uh, spatial buttons to reset our pins for us. Um, so, yeah, let's add in uh, spatial buttons. So we're going to go into Tilia and the package importer. And then down here somewhere should be spatial buttons. There we go. We're going to add that in. And I've never used spatial buttons in a live stream before. So this is a first for this as well. So before we do that, what we're going to do is we're going to add in something that can interact with the button. We're going to add in um, a pointer for our right hand. So we've got the, the curved pointer on the left hand in here. I'm going to add in uh, indicators, object pointers. I'm going to add in a straight pointer. And this is going to follow the right hand around. So tracked alias, right hand controller alias is what we want to follow. And then we'll activate it and select in the same way. So touchpad or thumbstick, in fact, because that's the one that works. Thumbstick. Uh, touch and press so thumbstick touch thumbstick press select right so we've got that set up um now we need to add in a spatial button so let's add in a spatial button we'll put it over here somewhere the spatial buttons are effectively just a, a 3d object that forms as a button in the scene so we're going to add in a new spatial button so tilia prefabs and where are they they're in no, they're not in indicators. Did they go in interactive? Yeah, interactive spatial button. And we just want um, a click button. So just a button that you click and it does something. So a click button. And we're going to call this uh, reset pins. Reset. Actually, let's do one for recall ball as well. Recall ball click button. So I'll set this one up first and then I'll do the pin one. So let's move this to the bottom. Uh, let's just create this called buttons, put that zero, 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 put this in there, and then I'm going to move this around accordingly. So that down there, move this over here, over here, and then we'll rotate the whole thing. I didn't want to move that one. Dang it. I wanted to move buttons. Just going to position it roughly over here. We'll rotate it just to face the user a little bit. So we'll have it there. Right, so this button we need to now set up with some information. Um, so the style is we'll have, we need to just give it the text for each one. So we're going to do um, reset ball. And then we need to copy this for each individual one as well. So uh, that goes in there. Um, and we don't have an enabled state for this because, and same for disabled, we, we probably wouldn't use disabled. But basically, if we run the scene now, you'll see that this button just appears. Oh, it's backwards, isn't it? The whole thing needs rotating, I think. Um, or we're not getting the text on it for some reason. Why are we not getting the text? Um... Okay, uh, default mesh, normal text. Oh, it's missing the font for some reason. Oh, because it hasn't imported text mesh pro for some reason either. Why hasn't that imported text mesh pro? Right, let's go and import text mesh pro. Uh, well, has it imported text mesh pro? But for some reason, it's missing the font. Yeah, it's important text mesh pro, but the font's missing. What are you doing to me, Unity? Um, okay. Let's go and have a look at this again. Yeah, for some reason, text mesh pro hasn't installed the font, even though it's been imported. Uh, I'll tell you what, let's restart Unity and see if that helps the situation. So Unity is now down. Uh, reopen Unity again. 
Good old Unity. Do we have a font now? No. <laughs> Why not? Why is the font missing from TextMesh Pro? Ay, ay, ay. Um. Unity has decided it's a live stream, so I'm going to break. Yeah, the font is just completely missing. It's fine. We're gonna we're gonna work around this for now. Um, for some reason Unity has decided to break. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add in uh, a manual font. So if we go down to uh, text text mesh pro, yeah, it hasn't included any fonts. Look, font asset zero. So <laughs> Unity is not including any text mesh pro fonts. Um, right, I should be able to do legacy and then just do old fashioned text mesh on here. And I'm just going to do reset ball and we're going to use this. Um, and I think what we can do to clear this up is if I make this small, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1, and then we make the font bigger. Then we need to bring it out a bit. Uh, let's put this on local. And then need to just stretch this accordingly. So this needs to be bigger. And needs to be a bit longer. I'm just going to roughly stick it where it needs to go on this button. I have no idea why TextMesh Pro has decided to break. And actually, we need to make all this a bit smaller. So 0 0.02, 0 0.06, 0 0.01, and then we make the font bigger still. There we go. Now it's clean. The good old fashioned way of doing it with Unity. Um, right, so now we've got that. There we go. We can see our thing says reset ball now. And we've got this uh, button, but it doesn't do anything. So we're going to get that to actually reset our ball's position for us. Um, oh, the text, mesh in, the text mesh essentials import has just appeared for me. And then it says it can't do it. Oh, it's because I'm in play mode. Right, let's try clicking this. I don't know what's going on with Unity tonight. Right, now it will work. I don't need this on there now. I can get rid of this. Unity's finally decided. There we go, look. It's finally decided to import the essentials. Um, right, so we don't need that now. That will automatically appear when I run the game. There we go. So we've got that back. So all that other stuff I've just done, we don't need to do because Unity decided to catch up with me. Um, right. So I can get rid of new text. So we've got a button set up. So let's get this button to do something. So um, we've set the button up. What we need to do to get it to work is uh, we want to say when this button's activated, um, we actually want it to do something. Um, oh, I'm in the inside. When this button's activated, I want it to do something. And this button, we're just going to call our reset logic. So, uh, at ball spawn point, we're just going to say, uh, what is it? The empty event proxy meter we call receive. And then we need to set up the pointer to actually work with um, that button. Um, so... We've got a click button, so we need to add in, if I remember correctly, we need to add in our spatial target dispatcher. That's it. So we're going to go down here for buttons and we're going to add in prefabs and this comes in indicator spatial targets. We need a dispatcher and this is what dispatches the messages from the pointer to the buttons. And we just need to add one of those in and then in here now. We need to set up our uh, our straight pointer to point to this dispatcher. So it's got three events that we care about. It's got an entered event, an exited event, and a selected event. So we want all three of those. And on this dispatcher, we want our entered, we want uh, exited, and we want our selected. And then here, there should be one for enter, one for exit, and one for select and that deals with all the hover states and all the selection states and everything like that that we need and now that button should work so if we click on that button it should run our reset ball code so let's just double check that so remember we've got left controller allows us to teleport right controller lets us you can see we're getting the hover state on that now so if i pick a ball up and we throw it over there 
If I go to there and press down on the right thumbstick, it calls our reset ball logic, so it puts our ball back. So if we ever lose our ball, we can call it back. So we're going to set something up now to do the same with the pins, so we can reset our pins when they're knocked over. Um, I don't know what this is going on about. Remove the canvas renderer. I didn't have a, add a canvas renderer. Um, so go away. Right, so we've done that. So let's set up something that resets our pins for us. Um, how does this logic work in the tutorial? So if I scroll down, right, okay. So now we need to create another um, script and we'll call this pin group. And this is going to deal with uh, resetting the pins for us. So we don't need that and we don't need this boilerplate um right so we're going to add some basic things in again i'm just going to copy and paste these from the tutorial and then i'll you can read them in depth on the tutorial if you want i'm just going to briefly go over them so we're going to have an array of the pins we're going to have an array of the positions and we're going to have uh, an array of the pin rotations um so we're going to cheat here as well basically we're just going to grab all of the pins um everything that's got a, a class of pin we're just going to grab and we're going to stick this script on this pins here so all these pins underneath it have already got a pin script on so we're not going to bother manually adding them we're just going to do it in the awake we're going to go and grab all those sub pins using this code here first thing we want to do is save their position so i need this save position logic so the save position basically saves each pin's rotation and each pin's position so we know its original position when the game started. And then the next thing we do is we've just got another bit of uh, code which is public um, and that's called reset positions. And what that's going to do is when we call reset positions it's going to put all the pins back to where they were when we first started the game and we're going to call this cancel topple check you remember in pin we created this cancel topple check to check to see if the pin had toppled so this takes a little bit of time to check to see if the pins toppled so if that was running while we were resetting the pins we don't want that to continue running so we just cancel that that check completely um so and this logic is pretty straightforward you can see what it's doing it's just resetting the velocity on the pin um, resetting the position and the rotation to the ones we've stored up here um, and then we turn the pin back on because don't forget when we knock the pin over we turn them off um, so that's the logic for that next thing we need to do then is go into our game and on our pins put pin group there doesn't have any logic on it and then we just need to make another button so we're going to create another button we're going to put this a little bit higher about there and we'll call this uh, reset pins button whatever and then in here we just need to update these so reset pins and we need to do this for each one unfortunately um and uh, disabled ones will do and then the logic on here is just go to pins and we want to call pin group and there should be one called reset positions which is all we want to call so we want to call the reset positions and that will now allow us to knock the pins over so if i grab if we we've got reset ball and we've got reset pins reset pins doesn't really do anything now because all the pins are up if i get the ball and let's try and nope i've missed so let's just reset the ball grab it again knock some pins over So those pins are knocked over after a short amount of time they'll disappear like such and then we could take another we could have our second go for instance if that's how we wanted to play um completely missed there but if we want to carry on then we could just go to reset pins and we can see it puts our pins back to a starting position that's a pretty good bowl happy with that one still not a strike though um and our ball comes back our pins will disappear after a while Nah, I've messed that one up as well. I'll never be a professional bowler. That one's going to fall off. Blop, blop, blop. And they should disappear. Um, and then when we are happy, we can just reset our pins. Pins come back. So we've built a really, really simple uh, bowling game here where we can pick a ball up. We can roll it down the line. We can knock some pins over. And uh, we can get the ball back. So next thing I'm going to do 
is I'm going to add in another button that basically turns on or off our bumpers. So we don't want um, these are click buttons at the moment. We actually want a toggle button. Uh, oh, actually, do we want a toggle button? Um, let's go and see what button types there are again. Interaction, special buttons. There's an option button and a toggle button. I think it's a toggle button we want. And we'll have this uh, bumpers. And then I'm not going to do anything yet. I'm just, we're going to have enabled inactive. We're going to have it say bumpers on. And then enabled hover, bumpers are on. And then enabled active, we're going to have it say bumpers off. I'm not going to bother with the disabled one. I'm just going to check what this button does. Just going to move it up there. Been a while since I've used the hover and the toggle button. So bumpers on. If we click that, it goes on. I mean, you could you could word it accordingly, and then if you click it again, it goes off. So that's what a toggle button does basically. So a click button is you click it once and it turns it on and off, and a toggle button has two different states. Um, and here we've got two states for it: an activated and a deactivated. So when we activate uh, our bumpers on we actually want to turn our bumpers on so in environment we should just be able to go bumpers game objects active and when we deactivate that toggle button we want to say it's off that's it i mean maybe the wording should be the other way around i don't know but so the bumpers are off we turn the bumpers on the bumpers come on we turn them off they go off so we've created a really really simple mechanism here with our button we can get our bumper to come on and off. And then if we grab our ball and throw it, you see what I'm saying about it doesn't bounce off the bumper. It just literally slides down the bumper. And then there's a prime example of where we can't get the ball back because it hasn't hit the end. So this is where we'd want to reset ball. Um, maybe that should be the other way around. Bumpers on when the bumpers are on. That makes more sense, doesn't it? So that would say bumpers on. And then these would say off. Yeah, that makes more sense to me. Um, and then let's do something with these bumpers then where they can actually bounce. Let's just turn them on for now. Because this is actually covered in the tutorial. So it's near the top of the tutorial if I remember as well. Um, where is it? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to make uh, another script. And we'll call this script bumper. And... Nope, he hasn't opened. Open bumper script. This is a super, super simple script, this is. I'm just going to copy the uh, class here. So we need to have this info from the track inclusion. And then we need to create a method called bounce. And bounce basically takes collision data and we're going to get the the thing that's collided with it, which is going to be the ball. So that will, data will be the ball. We're going to get the velocity of the ball, and then we're just going to reflect it. So if the ball's moving to the left, when the ball hits the bumper, we're going to reflect that velocity so it looks like it's bounced off it. Now, we could do things where we use physics materials and stuff like that, um, but it's really fiddly to get all that stuff working nice and easy. So I'm just cheating with a bit of code here. Um, so with that on there what we need to do is um where do we want this thinking about it we want to put the bumper script where do we want to put the bumper script where does this tell you to put it then select the left lane bumper and the right lane bumper So we put, yeah, so we put the bumper script up on bumpers. So that goes there. And then this and this have a collision tracker on. And then when they collide with the ball, so when the collision has started, we just want to call bumpers bounce. I think that's it, literally that. 
So when the bumpers are on, if a ball hits the left one and picks up a collision, the collision tracker will call that bounce code, which will just reverse the, um, or it'll reflect the velocity. So now if I grab the ball, oh, I need to turn the bumper on, don't I? Turn the bumper on. And if I throw it into it, you see it bounces off it and it'll hit the other one and it'll reflect and it'll bounce all the way down. So they act a little bit more like bumpers, effectively. There you go. Almost got a strike with the bumpers. Um, so turn the bumpers off. Grab our ball. Not even got a spare. Uh, reset our pins. Get our ball. Nope. Terrible at bowling. Right, we've just got an error in that bumper script. So let's go and have a look at what that is. That's probably going to be because it's being called um, by something else. So uh, this is saying it doesn't have a rigid body, I'm guessing. So what we need to do here is just do a little check in here. So if data dot collision data is null or data dot collision data dot rigid body is null then we don't want this to run so we'll just return out this early that should prevent that error so was that error appearing right at the start was it i'm not entirely sure when it appeared so turn the bumpers on yeah, we're not getting an error now. Right. We've got ourselves uh, a mediocre bowling game. Last thing I'm going to do is just something a little bit fun in here. Is I'm going to um, just add like a big Jumbotron screen to the back wall. This is something I've, I've never done on a stream. And it's pretty simple to do. Is What we can do is use what's called a render texture. Um, so if I create a big screen on the back. And let's call this screen. And we'll make it a bit smaller. So uh, six by three, maybe. Bring it out a bit. Six nine, and then up a bit. So this is going to basically we're going to render a camera onto this screen. Um, so what we need to do is add a camera to the scene. So we're going to add a new camera. Um, and we don't want an audio listener, so we're going to get rid of that straight away. And we can see down here what that camera looks like. Let me just snap this back into there. Um, so we can see down here what that camera looks like. We're going to move this camera into position um, just so it can see these pins. And we want to rotate it through the X. So just wherever we want this Jumbo Tron to look like it's looking at. Um, so we can get an, a nicer picture of the pins at a distance in case you find it difficult to see in VR. Uh, about there that'll do and now what we need to do is go and create um, let's call this jumbotron camera and now what we need to do is go and create a render texture so in textures I'm just gonna go create a uh, render texture and we're gonna call this jumbotron and we shouldn't have to change anything else here and then on our big screen now if we set that to be the jumbotron texture all we need to do now is go and tell this camera to render its view to that target texture. So target texture is the render texture. And it's upside down. Um, let's fix that just by rotating everything around 180. There we go. Um, and it's pretty good. It's pretty centered. So that's what our big Jumbotron is going to look like. So if we run the game. You can see we've got this kind of like big screen at the back so we can see our pins a bit better. We can see what we're doing. So if I knock some over, terrible shot. Get the ball back. Cheat. So you can't do this in real bowling. You can see we're actually seeing what's happening on that render texture because we've got that camera that's closer to it. Um, obviously, I, I could do with adjusting the... There we go. Spare. Easy. I could do with adjusting the ratio and stuff. It's a little bit stretched texture. But you can see we've, it's really, really easy to add in uh, a texture for your for your game. And to kind of like do a big jumbo screen or something like that. And you can do mirrors and things that way as well. Um, 
But there we go. We've pretty much made uh, this bowling game now. Um, let's just make this a bit two. Nope. Actually, three. It's this one to be a bit smaller. Five point. Five point two. That'll do. Um, so let's just have one last go of playing it. And if anyone's got any questions or anything, uh, please feel free to post them in chat. I'm going to have a proper go on this now. See how we see how we've got on at our bowling game. So remember, I can teleport around just in this little area here. I can't go anywhere else. I can just go into this little area to position myself. Um, we've got our buttons up here that activate with my right controller. We've got our big jumbotron screen, so I can reset the ball, reset the pins. We can turn the bumpers on, they appear. We can turn them off, they disappear. Then we can distance grab with our ball. We could do things as well. Like once I've released the ball, we could have it go into air and then turn off our pointer grabber so I can't cheat like I'm doing now. Um, but let's see if I can get a strike for once. No, still no good. I'll get a spare this time, hopefully. Here we go for the spare. Have I done it? Have I done it? Have I done it? Oh, unlucky. So we could improve upon this game and say these all disappear. Now we move on to the next frame and stuff. So if that's something that you want to play with and, and try and do, that'd be great. Uh, reset our pins. Go for this. This strike. Nope. <laughs> that one didn't. That one didn't count. No, that's not going to be a strike either. So as you can see, um, bowling is not something that I'm amazingly good at. And this is still super, super simple as well, this game. So if we reset this, you can see I can't put any rotation on the ball or anything. It's just going to move in a certain angle. If I flick my wrist or anything, no angular velocity or anything really is being applied to this ball. So this is a really, really simple game. But it's definitely something fun and easy to make. Um, so if you are looking for something that you just want to build and you know get a feel for how to use the RTK, the bowling game is always a, a really great way of uh, getting going with it. I just want to get one strike. Oh, denied. <laughs> that one's just balanced. And you can just, there's no physics either, so I can just lob the ball like a basketball if I wanted. I probably could get a strike like that. Let's try that again. Nope. <laughs> Let me set the ball. Nope. <laughs> I'm going to get it in a minute. Promise. Nah, that won't be a strike. <laughs> I can't believe this. One's left. Anyway, okay, so I'm not going to keep playing the game now. But there we go. We've got our uh, our bowling game done. <sighs> apply English to the ball. What does apply English to the ball mean? Do you mean rotation? Or is English some uh, crazy bowling speak? I don't know what English is. Well, I do. It's a language. Let me just take my headset off because we're done with this. Right. There we go. We have a bowling game all ready to go. And we've seen a few new things as well here. We've seen the spatial buttons, which I've not shown before. There's a couple of other ones as well. There's... Um, a group button where one can be on, one can be off. And these are all mentioned in the Academy documentation. So if you go to academy.vrtk.io, it will cover how to use all the buttons. And again, we've added that little Jumbotron texture, which was easy enough. Um, but there we go. We've built ourselves uh, a simple bowling game. As I was saying at the start of the stream for those who weren't here, this is actually going to be the last live stream for a while. Um, so rather than doing live streams, what we're probably going to do is move back to more traditional videos where um, they're like pre-recorded, five, ten minutes long, just showing simple functionality. That seems to be more what people are interested in rather than watching these hour long live streams. So this will be the last one for a while. Um, we may bring them back in the future if there's an uptake in interest in uh, the RTK and the more traditional videos but for everybody that has watched along over the past 19 weeks it's it's been i think um thanks very much for watching 
um, and we will be making new videos in the future um, but tonight is going to be the last live stream for the foreseeable uh, but just quickly Anikazi said in billiards English is applied by striking the ball with the cue stick slightly off centre I did not know it was called English so basically you're asking can you put a curl on the ball you absolutely could put um, a curl on the ball um, but you'd have to take into you'd have to write some code, custom code, to take into consideration the angular velocity of the controller at point of release, and then try and apply that to the ball in a certain sense. So things like that are a little bit more advanced. So a bowling game is great because it's very easy to build a simple bowling game, just like it's very easy to build like a simple golf game. The mechanics are really simple, but to build a realistic one is really tricky um so i wouldn't attempt to cover that stuff in a live stream but yep yeah, hopefully that's answered that question uh just making it a physics object wouldn't take care of it no it's it's already a physics object it's uh, a rigid body so having simple physics and giving it a rotation isn't necessarily going to give it a spin that you would expect in a bowling in a bowling ball um so you'd need to do some uh, calculations etc can you make it so when i bowl the ball the pins turn into my bullies from school unfortunately that hasn't been uh developed yet in the world of unity they are looking at doing that for 2022.1 in that you can actually make bullies appear in your games but up until 2022.1 i don't think they're going to allow bullies um Got a ball, got a ball, got a ball strike is how I play. That isn't technically correct. It's got a ball, got a ball strike. You don't do three got a balls and then a strike. It's just the two got a balls. If you've done three got a balls, you've gone one got a ball, too many. Um, yes, Morgi, you can send me their photos. I'm not sure how you pronounce your name. Is it Morgi or Morgi? Uh, Morgi, maybe. Um, but yeah, I'm going to. Uh, can you have a shout out for your sweet m m Mongji? No, I, I don't. I don't think you can. Sorry. <laughs> your photos are underage. Of of you. Right. This this stream is highly enough now into chat. So I'm gonna wrap this up. So thank you everyone for watching the stream, and um, we may be back in the future. But that's going to be it for now. So bye for now, everybody.